transitions, seamless transitions, dynamic transitions. These terms seems to be very popular. Today we'll talk about transition packs and my love-hate relationship with them. In a moment I'll show you how I created the opening sequence using pretty cool transition pack I found on Video Hive and very affordable footage and music from Envato Elements. For a full disclosure, this is not a sponsored video, but if you happen to buy something using links below, I will get a small commission. There is no additional cost to you and it keeps the light on at Cut to the Point headquarter. But before we dive into these transitions, let's first address what we really care about on this channel, that is the art of editing itself. Let's imagine you're writing a scene and you're using an exclamation mark in every single line. Will it work as intended? My guess is that after a few lines, each exclamation mark draws less and less attention and eventually we treat it as a new status quo, as a new standard level. Purpose of any transition should be to reinforce, to emphasize something. And how it works really depends on the context and the expectations that we as the audience have. A few months ago I've read the script for A Quiet Place and I really loved how they used this rule. When you barely have dialogue, you need to depend much more on punctuation, including exclamation marks. Have a look at this page of the screenplay. It breaks the rule of screenplay formatting to really emphasize what's going on. Each line is a separate page, font increasing on every single one. I strongly recommend that you read this script. I believe this is not the shooting script they used, but it still does a really great job of creating suspension on the piece of paper. And I just think that by analyzing it, we as editors can learn a lot from it. Also, this is slightly off topic, but I cannot resist to mention how the Chekhov's gun concept is used in this screenplay. If you're not familiar with that concept, just google it or let me know in the comments if many people are interested, I might do a separate video about it. The Chekhov's gun in this screenplay is a nail. Have a look how it's first introduced on page 5 and how it's then used 35 pages later to push the story forward. All of this to say that we need to remember that film is a language and unless we want something to be a relevant grammar element of the story we're telling, we need to be constantly motivating the use of any dynamic transition and so on and so forth. I do think that the more we customize the better. For example, instead of creating double exposure intro you've seen, it would be much easier to use ready to go template it would require much less effort and time. But instead I came up with an idea, shot and used some After Effects magic because I wanted to visualize what you can expect from this channel as much as possible. And this is very hard to accomplish with ready-to-go assets. But I'm not saying that there is no place for ready-to-go assets, templates and so on. I'm just saying that it's one of those rules that should be broken with caution. I've actually bought these transitions and Envato Element subscription myself because I want to try something new on my Instagram profile. I'll be posting some very short videos with Premiere Pro tips and without any narration, so it will be just screenshots and graphics. So for that purpose, that is short videos that will be watched without sound and browsed between other videos and photos, I think that these eye-catching transitions might do the job. Okay, let's have a look at this 1000 plus transition pack, what's cool about it and how we can import and use it in Premiere Pro in the best way. The workflow I will show is in my opinion the most reliable and efficient. The first time you're using any template project you got from someone else, it's good to resave it on your machine. So just open the project, hit Ctrl plus S and replace the original file. These transitions are created as sequences. It has some benefits that are not possible to accomplish as effects. Let us open one of those sequences and let's have a look at it. As you can see on the first track we've got some stock images. And on the tracks above we've got some clips that are used as containers for the effects. And what's really special about these transitions, what I really love about it, is that we already have sound effects placed on the timeline. Sound really helps to sell these dynamic transitions. And thanks to these stock images on the first track, we can actually preview transitions before we apply it. To preview transitions, let's open this bin and drag it to its old panel. Now activate icon view, if you're like me and you use list view by default. Now we are able to hover over these thumbnails and preview what any given transition does. 
how do we work with this pack? Start your project like any other. So if you have a template project file, go ahead, use it. Some other tutorials would tell you to copy the project file for transitions and work within it. But this is not the best way. Just edit the video like you would normally until the point when you're ready to add transitions. Now open media browser panel and navigate to the transitions project for the resolution you need. Drill it down and select only the bin for the transitions you really want to use. Now right click and import it to the project. Repeat it a few times if you want to import more transitions. This way we only import what we really intend to use. We don't import all of these transitions, which could potentially slow down the project and create some stability issues. Just have a look at any of the project files for this transition pack. It's over 22 megabytes in size. And starting with a project file like this would be ridiculous. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Uncheck the first button here to make sure you place individual clips rather than nested sequences. If you don't know what I'm talking about, pause the video and watch this one first. Before we apply these transitions though, we need to take care of source patching. Because we want to place these sequences on our working timeline, we obviously don't want to import stock images as well. The setting that controls which tracks will be inserted or overwritten on the timeline is called the source patching. And it's the first column over here. Do not mistake it with track targeting, which is the second column over here. So we need to deactivate source patching for the video track number one. Finally, we're ready. We can now just drag and drop any of the transitions like this. Let's have a look at the effect. Notice that we already have sound effects placed on the timeline, which is in my opinion the best feature of this pack. I just love it. Let's have a look at some of my favorites. First, elastic zoom. My second favorite is lens zoom. I really like glitch transitions as well. Flat transitions are probably what I will use a lot as well. Camera transitions could be useful in some specific cases. And I really like the effect of warp transitions. One more thing. In most real life scenarios, you will have more than one video and audio track. You will probably have B-roll on the second or the third track and a few audio tracks already on the timeline. So just be careful not to overwrite some other clips when dragging and dropping these transitions onto the timeline. If you want to streamline the editing process in Premiere Pro, this playlist is the way to go. I'd love to have you subscribed and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on new videos. Until the next time, shoot and edit like there is no tomorrow.